You're never going to believe this, but Nvidia and Intel just joined forces to make a gaming chip, and Nvidia is buying a part of Intel. This is quite possibly the biggest story of the year so far. But before I get to that, AMD just launched a new desktop gaming GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD just announced a new desktop gaming GPU seemingly out of nowhere and it's really odd. So as you can see, it's the RX 7700 non-XT and as the name suggests, it's based on RDNA 3 and it comes with 40 RDNA 3 compute units, which is 2560 stream processors. So it obviously sounds like a cut down 7700 XT, right? Well, here's where things get really weird. Instead of 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 across a 192-bit bus, the 7700 non-XT comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 across a 256-bit bus. Maybe this is AMD trying to give us more options for high memory cards, I'm not sure, but on their product page, as you can see, they actually share some benchmarks. And when we compare those to the 7700 XT, it's right around 16 to 19%, or at least there's a 16 to 19% gap between them. So we're looking at Resident Evil 4, 70 to 84 FPS with the 7700 XT, Dying Light 2, 63 to 75. And of course, I do want to note that this is if they use the exact same settings for these games. They likely did, but just want to put that there just in case. Then Hogwarts Legacy, 64 to 79. So like I said, around 16 to 19% gap in performance. Basically, this really is an odd GPU, especially for AMD to release it now. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments below. Next up, it's a celebration because it's been 10 years of sinking ships and making waves with World of Warships. It's a legacy that millions of captains around the world helped create. And if you haven't been a part of it, now's the perfect time to join. Luckily, they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about it. World of Warships is the ultimate free-to-play adventure that puts you in command of a naval fleet, featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels. From battleships to destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers, and even submarines for anyone ready to fight beneath the sea. With incredible graphics across more than 40 unique maps, Maps and dynamic weather effects, stunning new water effects, your battleground has gone to a whole new level. Whether you want to play as a lone wolf or in a division with friends, World of Warships has you covered. And in honor of their 10th anniversary, from September through the end of the year, players will embark on a multi-month adventure packed with exclusive missions, rewards, and challenges. Oh, and did I mention it's on console and PC? Check that out in my link below. And lastly for today, what's probably the biggest and most shocking story of the year so far, NVIDIA has officially teamed up with Intel to make gaming chips for PC. Impossible. Plus, x86 NVIDIA server chips and NVIDIA is buying some of Intel, like to own a part of the company. This is wild. So starting things off, both rivals, or I guess we could say former rivals now, Intel and NVIDIA officially announced all of this. First, that NVIDIA would be buying $5 billion of Intel common stock at $23.28 per share, which is a whopping 5% of the company. Now, that's obviously not a controlling stake, and we don't have information about whether NVIDIA will have a seat on the board or anything like that, but I have no doubt NVIDIA did this to ensure that any investments they put into this new partnership won't come back to bite them. Basically, this is a very serious partnership, and it really could be bad news for AMD if all of this is approved. But of course, the really big news here are these new chips. For starters, as they state here, the products include x86 Intel CPUs tightly fused with an NVIDIA RTX graphics chiplet for the consumer gaming PC market named the Intel x86 RTX SoCs. NVIDIA will also have Intel build custom x86 data center CPUs for its AI products for hyperscale and enterprise customers. Now, as you would imagine, this has huge ramifications throughout the industry. It stands to reason that NVIDIA could even use Intel's fabs now. We could see NVIDIA move away from ARM and further into x86, especially because they weren't able to purchase ARM like they wanted. In fact, that's what it sounds like NVIDIA is doing. So while they promise 
promise to remain fully committed to other announced products, roadmaps, and architectures, including the company's ARM-based GB10 Grace Blackwell, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I really doubt that's, well, they probably will at least do the stuff that's already been announced, but it's clear, they even say it here, it says they emphasize the company are committed to multi-generational roadmaps for the co-developed products, which represent a strong investment in the x86 ecosystem. Basically, this could revive Intel almost entirely from the dead. This seriously was a wild curveball from Nvidia, and I think it shows that ARM isn't going to take over anytime soon, like some would have had you believe. Either way, before I get to the gaming chip, I wanted to quickly go over the data center CPUs. As you can see down here, it says, Intel will fabricate custom x86 data center CPUs for NVIDIA, which NVIDIA will then sell as its own products to enterprise and data center customers. However, the entirety and extent of the modification are currently unknown. We do know that NVIDIA will employ its NVLink interface, which tells us the chips could leverage NVIDIA's new NVLink Fusion tech that enables custom CPUs and accelerators to enable faster, more efficient communication with NVIDIA's GPUs than found in the PCI Express interface. So essentially, Intel is going to make chips that NVIDIA will use with their own technology to sell to their data center customers. You might be thinking that this is just the custom Xeon chips that NVIDIA has been offering for a while now, but no. This definitely seems very different. And given the fact that it can use NVIDIA's NVLink, we could see some wild things coming out of this. With all of that said, the really exciting part is definitely their PC chips. Here it says, quote, for the PC market, the Intel x86 RTX SoC chips will come with an x86 CPU chiplet tightly connected with an NVIDIA RTX GPU chiplet via the NVLink interface. And just like with their data center, this is really exciting because the NVLink is extremely fast. I mean, the bandwidth is off the charts. It goes on to say that this type of processor will have both CPU and GPU units merged into one compact chip package. And if this sounds familiar to an AMD APU to you, that's because it is. Now, you might be thinking that Intel has already tried this with AMD and their KB Lake G chips back in 2017. And that was, of course, a pretty big disaster given the issue with driver support. But things are being done very differently here. For one, instead of a memory package that's only accessible by the GPU, the NVIDIA slash Intel product will have an RTX GPU chiplet that's connected to the CPU chiplet via in VLink interface, and because of that, they're actually going to have uniform memory access, so both the CPU and GPU are able to access the memory pool. Second, instead of Intel having to validate the drivers before AMD could launch them, which seemed to be the cause of the KB Lake issue to begin with, Intel and NVIDIA will be responsible for their own drivers. Though, it seems like Intel will be the one that's actually going to build and sell the consumer processors. As far as where this will go, it sounds like most will be targeting the thin and like notebook segment, but there could easily be products across multiple areas, maybe even desktop. Either way, this is a massive announcement, and it's something that I think will have a huge effect on the market moving forward. But of course, what do you think about this? What's NVIDIA's ultimate plan, and are you interested? Let me know down in the comments below.